Hey folks, today we are taking a look at Transformers Fall of Cybertron Deluxe Class Insecticon. I've got to start with this review with saying the robot mode on this guy is pretty amazing. It, it really is pretty awesome. The overall look of the robot mode is quite nice with the Decepticon purple and the gold. Just really, really nice. And I really like the kind of a mask look to the head. I think that's a very nice touch and a good design decision. The posability of the figure is nice and it just is an interesting, interesting robot mode. Is it perfect? Not really, but I like it still. He does come with a few accessories, namely this tire, a launcher for the tire, and then these wings, which are used in uh, bug mode. But then they are supposed to be uh, combined with the launcher here to make a ridiculously proportioned weapon that doesn't fire very far. No, seriously, this, uh, this launcher is one of those push launchers. So about four inches is the most you're going to get out of flight from this little disc. Now... One thing I didn't notice initially about the launcher, but I've now discovered, is if you take the wings and move them up to the where the handle is, what you in effect of have is a little bug drone. This is a, like a little grasshopper drone here for this guy. So you can actually pose this as a bomber, not a weapon, which... I'm wondering how ha I'm wondering if Hasbro did this on purpose because here's the head of the of the bug drone and you could paint little eyes on it and then here are wings and some little legs and here's the back thorax and then here's the bomb so you could be he could be flying along and then some bug set us up with a bomb yes I just made a bad meme reference so that is actually a very cool idea so you actually don't really have a weapon but an Insecticon drone that launches things out of the butt. That's actually pretty thoughtful. So, Kickback's actual bot, or bot mode, like I said, is very nice. I like it a lot. Posability-wise, head is on a swivel. The antennas are posable. Arms are on a ball joint here at the shoulder, then a ball joint at the elbow. The hands can move, but you really don't want to because the arm guards do get in the way, but they do f uh, move out just a bit. No torso articulation. Ball joint at the hip. Swivel underneath that. Hinge joint at the knee. Ball joint at the foot. So you can get some decent poses out of this guy. And he's also got these bug arms, which become wings in bug mode. They are on ball joints, but are somewhat limited due to just the way the plastic is. So they are on ball joints. Then they are on hinge joints that give 90 degrees worth of articulation. And then the claws themselves have zero articulation, unfortunately. So I like to pose him with his claws over his head like this. But they are easily swapped and swiveled around to fit on his back. So you don't need to deploy them in robot mode if you do not wish. Kickback's transformation is actually very complex for a figure of this size. In fact, it's a lot more complex than I initially thought. To start off with, take the head and rotate it so that the face is pointing straight back. Oh, and I forgot to show you all this light piping for just a visor. So, as I said, take the head and turn it around and then there's this gray piece between the arms fold that up and over the face then take these bits on the breastplate and fold them down and just kind of fold them down and they're not going to go anymore right now so what we're going to do is grab the entire front of the chest and actually unpeg it from the body when you do that you can then take these gold pieces and fold them completely in like that then take the head and flip it all the way around to the back of the figure like this. Next, what we're going to do is take the arms and pull the forearm bits forward. Uh, the shoulders are just sitting on these plastic nubs, 
and they do have a tendency to fall off very easily, so just be aware of that. Next, take the arms and fold them back like this. And just kind of fold them up and then twist them around so that the armpits are pointing towards the sky. And then bring the arms together like this. Bring the arms together over where the head was and then snap them into place like that. Now, they do not like to hold together at all. So just be aware of that. Next, for the legs, we're going to open up the legs and spread them, and then take the actual leg, and there is a second hinge right here by the crotch. That is actually going to fold all the way around and in, and then just turn the leg around. So fold that area all the way around, and flip the leg around. When you pull the leg, you then pull the leg straight up to where the arms were, and it will snap into the opening in the shoulder pads. All right, then we can take the insect legs and fold them down, bring the entire uh, head section, bring that forward. Things like to get in my way here. All right, so I did kind of screw up a little bit and I want to show you what I did. And I keep doing this on this figure. When I had the legs, I lifted the head up like that and pushed it off to the back. And I keep thinking that that's all you have to do. Well, no, what you have to do is you take the head and the chest and you push it to the back. And then when you get your arm, the arms pointing up and the legs split open, then you take the robot head and swivel it all the way back around into the crotch of the, or what was the crotch of the toy. And when you do that, you just want to make sure that you've got these two pieces co collapsed. So then when you flip it around, it'll then put the bug head in the correct spot. And I apologize for that, guys. I keep doing that. I keep making that mistake. So we'll then bring all of the bits back to where they were. And then for the bug arms, take the wings that we had earlier, and they just snap into these snaps. And I keep forgetting which way to have that. Doop 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 doop. Herp -a -derp. Ah, there we go. You want it so that the peg is pointing towards the body like that. Now this is where things get a little weird. The directions aren't exactly clear with what to do with these legs. So with these legs what we're supposed to do is turn them around so that they're facing down like that and then open them up and take the feet and turn the feet around 180 so that these two points, the uh, the tip of the knee and the back of the foot become its hind legs. So do the same thing over here, like that. And here we have him in buggy mode. We're in weird techno grasshopper mode. I will be the first to admit that the grasshopper mode is odd aesthetically. It's not perfect. It, uh, it has some issues, not least of which being you have nowhere to store the weapon or bug drone in this mode. There are no peg holes to plug any weapons into, except on the inside of the wings, which is a little silly. Overall, the bug mode, I don't think it works all that well, especially since things keep flailing about with this. So the legs aren't exactly what I would consider to be stable. The, the abdomen back here doesn't stay together all that well. The overall look is just kind of jumbled. It's not horrible. It could be a lot worse but it's not that great. So I just leave this thing in its, per in its 
really, really nice robot mode. Now, like I said, robot mode is where this thing is at, or the, where this thing shines. The bug mode leaves a lot to be desired. I'll, I'm just trying, really trying to be nice here. But it's not a bad figure because of it. I think the bug mode will appeal to quite a few people, actually. I'm just not thrilled with it. I think it could, could it be better? I don't know. That's a really hard question for me to answer because of the aesthetics of this figure. It's not perfect, and once you remember how to correctly transform him, it's not awful, but it could be it could be improved, I think. Now, does that mean I never want to see another Insecticon in the FOC toy line? No. No, 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 no. I want more of the Insecticons. I want Hard Shell. I want, all right, I want Bombshell and Shrapnel, even though they're Hard Shell and Shrapnel, I think. Or maybe Incisor or some other weird name. But this actually, I think, was the hardest of the three for Hasbro to do. And... I applaud them for doing it. I really do. Is it perfect? No. But it's a good attempt. It's not the best in the world, just as I said. So, but overall, I do like this figure. It has grown on me. The robot mode is excellent. The robot mode is a lot of fun. And like I said, you get this cool little drone. Uh, you get this cool little uh, insect drone, which I think is brilliant. I really think that's a great idea. Buzz, 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 buzz. As it stands, I think this robot mode is very good looking and very intimidating. And I really do think this figure, especially the robot mode, deserves to be in your collection. I picked this guy up at BigBadToyStore.com and I suggest you do the same. I'm Vault Matrix. I hope you enjoyed this review and I'll catch you guys next time.